the CARICOM Secretariat is leading the way, demonstrating how renewable energy can be generated and managed in public buildings across the region. The Secretariat in Georgetown, Guyana is now home to the 400 kilowatts solar energy power generation project being handed over today. The project will meet the energy needs of the Secretariat, which has an average daily demand of about 360 kilowatts. Overall, the Secretariat is expected to have a net zero energy balance. The available excess energy will be used to provide power to the national grid during its off-peak operations. The CARICOM Energy Unit designed the project, which was funded through a grant agreement between the Government of Japan and Guyana to the tune of 17.8 million US dollars, 7 million of which were earmarked for this project. After the project launched in January 2020, a team from Japan joined local counterparts to begin work on the grounds of the Secretariat in February 2020. Unfortunately, the global COVID-19 pandemic disrupted progress, forcing a suspension a mere two months after work had started. The project resumed in June 2021 and will position the Secretariat as a leader in distributed renewable energy generation and efficient energy use. It will highlight how the cost of energy and the carbon footprint in public buildings throughout CARICOM can be reduced through the optimized use of solar photovoltaic power generation, battery energy storage and advanced energy management technologies. The project is a testament to what can be achieved when there is adequate foresight and investment in the commercially available technologies for sustainable energy production, delivery and use, and the people who will support those operations. As part of the project's capacity building component, Japanese consultants conducted training on the system structure, management and risk mitigation with staff members of the CARICOM Secretariat, the Guyana Energy Authority and the Guyana Power and Light Incorporated. The project is intended to serve as an example of the resilient energy design characteristics that are promoted under the CARICOM energy policy and the responsible energy features that are required within a green economy. What we would have put at the center of the energy program is energy security. And the building block of energy security is really about how it is that we can diversify um, the options for producing um, energy within, uh, within, within, within our, our different countries. Solar is an option that's available in our countries. So it allows Guyana in this particular project to diversify um, the energy that is being produced for the power grid. The diversification is something that is important to energy security. Building it in the way that we did by making it operate like a microgrid that is embedded into a national grid is one that gives us flexibility and that flexibility is important to resilience and resilience is a key feature of energy security because if your energy system is not able to stand up to different levels of stresses and stressors then it is not going to be secure because if, 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 if a secure energy system means you are able to access it um, most of the times if not all the times and so the resilience uh, features allows us to be able to bounce, withstand any kind of stresses or bounce back from any stresses and that is a big part of energy security resilience is an integral part of energy security for us and we are now building out all our energy security features to include resilience so we have gotten the kind of um, diversity that is necessary and the kind of flexibility that is necessary to test some of those resilience and security features that are necessary so it's not just about solar and battery and energy management that leads to greater efficiency and the use of renewable energies but it's also a design feature that allows us to be more efficient and more resilient and more secure in general so it's addressing most of the strands and in the in the, in the process of doing so we try to do it in a cost effective way um, and we ensured that it was an interaction among technology and people and processes so it wasn't simply a technology transfer but there is the technology pieces and the technology pieces are done in such a way that the technology is optimized around the people who will operate them and then we of course built the kind of processes that will allow us to ensure that the technology use is one that is efficient and effective. Former CARICOM Deputy Secretary General Ambassador Manorma Suknandan had oversight over the project during her tenure and served as its champion. It's going to be a total aesthetic change. The site here in front will change. That's one. Personally, I think it will really have a professional outlook, right? And whoever passes now will not say that building, but they will say, you know, those uh, things in front, the, the blue shiny things, that is where the CARICOM Secretariat is. 
I must say it's not only you know a pride for me, but also for all the staff members in the CARICOM secretary, but especially the team that is also assisting in this, and also for our Japanese uh, counterparts who are also on the ground working, JICA and the Japanese government. Because this is a first in Guyana, and I think also when it comes to regional institutions, the uplifting and the value adding part of it, and especially the purpose that it has to serve, it's also the first in our region. So I think the, all the staff members in the CARICOM Secretariat but especially the team working on this, can be very proud of it. By identifying the foregrounds of the Secretariat as its best location, the project's designers took into consideration cost, practical use, visibility, and preservation of the natural environment. The design of the project was about balance, balancing different issues and balancing different requirements and different perspectives. And among the things that we had to balance was, were, was of course, the location of the project relative to the various um, characteristics that we wanted the project to have. Number one, um, this is a grant funded project and you want to have some amount of visibility, not just for the donors, but also because of the kind of, if, as, as I said before, we, we, want, we, we are trying to showcase um, the use of sustainable energy as part of building um, energy efficiency and building um, sustainability. And if it is that we are trying to showcase something, you want it to be highly visible, not necessarily hidden um, somewhere. So that is one of the considerations that went into the design. Of course, we looked at options of placing panels on the roof. That wasn't an, an option for the way the, the base and the way the secretary was designed. And we also were conscientious of the architecture of the building and we made the decision not to touch the building because we didn't want to affect the architecture of the building. So we understand that the future of buildings in the world, not just the Caribbean, is one where there will be the interaction of modern technology with um, traditional and conventional art architectures. And this is a, an example of how it is that we will have to go about the process of balancing the, the modernizations that are required for our buildings to be sustainable, but at the same time have the buildings um, being able to preserve some of their architectural and their um, historic and their conventional features. So we have been able to maintain the building in its pristine condition. Um, we also had to be conscientious to of course, because at the end of the day, you know, we could have done it in a way which is which would have made it um, very, uh, if you want to call it archi architecturally, um, if you, uh, more, even more modern than what it is now. We could have used solar trees. We explored options for using solar trees and all kinds of different um, of, of, of designs. But with those, some of those, um, what we would call more aesthetically friendly design, come much greater cost. So we always have to strike the balance between what is cost, what is practical use, and um, you know, and what, what are some of the, 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 the desirable features that we want to maintain so that what we get is really a preservation as far as possible of the natural environment, but at the same time, we are able to manage our costs and at the same time, we are able to um, keep some of the conventional um, structures in place and, 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 and give the same kind of social feel and social dynamic that we had before. So it's a balance of the social, the environmental, the costs and all the usual features that we have to take into place. And we did do quite a juggling act and we balance everything in order to get one. Dr. Gary Jackson, who heads the Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, echoed the view that the project design exemplifies flexibility and robustness. These are central requirements to the twin objectives of climate adaptation and abatement being pursued by all member states. Um, one of the things that I love about it as well is the flexibility it has. So it has a solar PV, it has batteries. And, and how they designed it is that if the batteries are fully charged, then the solar can just provide energy to the building. And if, and if you, you lose the solar, the battery can just provide, provide energy to the building. So it has the flexibility to operate within these two modules, um, PV and batteries. Um, so I do like the flexibility, it's very robust. It obviously demonstrates resilience, um, which is something that we have always spoken about in terms of adaptation and mitigation. So it, it kind of does both things, which is very good. And the building management system, great uh, because what they did um, not just that they provide supply to the building but they also provide controls of how they manage energy in the building um, which is always important because there is a, a marriage between energy efficiency and renewable energy that people have sometimes ignored and I think it's very good that the CARICOM Secretariat had made that decision to demonstrate the importance of both sides of the coin and I think that is an excellent um, tool 
to show the world of, of, of what the region is about. I think it, it, it now tells the, the, the world and the region that you can do this too. And, and it's for us now to, to, you know, within our respective places of work, respective places in the region to, you know, take the opportunity to, to get this done. And, and as I said in a, in a previous discussion with another, another interviewer is that it's our time now to demonstrate, to infiltrate. So we can now show the world that we can do this and we can have others follow us too. So CARICOM Secretariat has now modeled the way. They are now walking the talk. It's no longer a discussion. It's no, we're doing it. We're telling you how it performs and we're asking you to do it too. The project forms part of the philosophical approach by the CARICOM Secretariat to strengthen the linkage between policy and implementation and to reflect on the recent prioritization of the energy program on energy security in general and energy resilience in particular. Renewable and efficient energy use in buildings, as demonstrated by the project, is a key aspect of those efforts. It is intended to serve as a harbinger for future distributed system designs, which is now firmly anchored within the Integrated Utility Services Initiative. That initiative is supporting utility-led investments behind the meter. In so doing, it will democratize the way in which customers access and use energy within their premises. The CARICOM Secretariat is leading by example. It's diversifying its energy sources, becoming a net carbon sink, and exhibiting how sustainable energy action can be achieved through strategic partnerships. <laughs>